Hi, I'm Kenneth Weidsta. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my photography talks. Today I'm going to talk about gear. Specifically, what's in my bag. So this is the camera that has become my go-to. It's a Leica M2 with a 35mm 1.4 Sumalux. And then at the camera show I was just at, I bought a tap and die leather strap. It's super heavy and it's super guaranteed not to fall off with the clips. It's so big and serious. It's a little bit on the stiff side. I need to like just work it. I need to get it so it gets nice and soft. And I guess just by using it, it's already softening up some since I bought it. But let's talk about this camera. I cannot afford to buy a Sumalex. I picked up this body years ago inexpensively for $400 and I only bought it because it was $400 and I knew it's worth more than that in resale. It was at a camera shop. And this lens, and I may have talked about this before, but I don't remember. But this lens, somebody in Boulder was selling a Leica M3 with this lens, 35.14, and a 51.5, one of those older 50 millimeter fast lenses. And he had the whole kit for $1,300. And I went and checked it out, and the M3 was in great shape. The lenses were in good shape, fine shape, perfect shape. and. I offered him $1,100 and he said, sure. And so for $1,100, I got an incredible wealth of quality lenses and a body. And I'll use that M3 with that 50, but the 35 goes on here because I could never afford this 35 millimeter Cinelux. There's just no way I can afford it. On my salary with the kind of work I do, we're always working on you know making a living as a photographer. It's never always easy. and. This, this camera is not the kind of thing where, you know, photographers have the most money to spend on brand new Leicas and monochromes and all the latest digital gear and the big uh, medium format gear. I have to buy things used when I can find them. And I knew I had to kind of jump on it because I knew that somebody else will show up and take that for $1,300 in no time. So I asked him for $1,100. He said, yeah, I can sell that M3 and get some of that back if I want to get out of it. But I know it's never going to lose its money. It's always going to be worth way more than that. And I want to use this. Look how small that 35.14 is. To have a fast 35 in my pocket, literally, it's so small. The only thing I had to do is I had to spend $40 on a lens hood because the proprietary lens hood that this takes, it didn't come with it. It came with a lens cap that kind of hardly fit. And I already lost it. So I want to get that lens hood onto this onto this uh, lens and then it'll be my protection because I won't use a lens cap and I think it's a uh, lens hood that has a separation that you can set a series 7 filter inside that lens cap so that'll be what I'll do I might throw a yellow filter on and just leave it on there all the time but the idea of having a 3514 I'll put the lens cap on it this is my carry around camera this is my go-to if you can find an M2 in good shape don't overpay for it. You can find a 3514. That's a great, great setup. And it's what I used to shoot my buddy Ed back at that Irish pub a few episodes ago. It's what I used to shoot at night when I shot down up in South Dakota, my partner and her friend walking at night. It's just a fun, fun, simple camera that is well built, as good as the M3, I think. And I love that lens on it. And again, look for the deals. Follow Craigslist, search for where the bargains are. They're out there, but you have to keep your eyes open. You have to be quick and then you can get them too. All right, that's today's photography talk. If you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button. If you can support me, please do hit the Patreon. And thanks everybody who has already. Thanks so much.